Let's delve into a cult classic from the late 1950s, The Killer Shrews. Released in 1959, this movie takes viewers on a thrilling journey filled with suspense and unexpected twists. Brace yourself for a roller coaster of emotions as you explore the world of the killer shrews with funny, shocking, and even sad moments awaiting you. Share your memories of when you first watched this film. Did you catch it during a late night screening with friends or enjoy a cozy evening at home? Let us know about any scenes or moments from the movie that left a lasting impression on you. We're eager to hear your stories and experiences related to this classic. Don't hesitate to share them with us as your memories could spark lively conversations among fellow fans. Stay tuned for more intriguing facts and anecdotes about The Killer Shrews. The Killer Shrews, a 1959 movie, presents a classic scenario a group of scientists and a boat crew find themselves trapped on a desolate and exotic island facing mutated shrews that threaten their lives. Despite its low budget and dated effects, the film offers entertainment for fans of B-grade sci horror. The acting in The Killer Shrews is typical of its era, with a slightly exaggerated style. However, the shrew monsters, portrayed by dogs in rat suits, add a unique charm to the film. While the effects may appear crude by modern standards, they contribute to the movie's cheesy appeal. Despite its flaws, the film maintains a fast pace and includes moments of suspense, particularly towards the end. Character deaths add to the tension, with memorable scenes such as Rook being eaten alive by shrews and Jerry meeting his demise due to his own actions. Overall, The Killer Shrews is a product of its time, offering entertainment value for those who appreciate campy horror films. It may not be a masterpiece, but it remains an enjoyable watch for fans of the genre. The movie The Killer Shrews, made in 1959, is special in movie history. It wasn't just an ordinary movie. It showed how creative its makers were. Interestingly, Best decided to bring his real-life dog, Flash, onto the show The Dukes of Hazard with him. This made the show more personal and made both the character and the actor who played him more likable to the audience. Best met the rising Western actor Robert Fuller while filming the sixth episode of Laramie. Their meeting led to a friendship that lasted for 56 years, showing how strong friendships can be in the unpredictable world of show business. Their bond went beyond the screen as both actors supported each other through the ups and downs of their careers. It's a friendship that lasted until Best passed away in 2015. Despite its small budget and modest beginnings, The Killer Shrews found success and gained recognition worldwide. Its popularity wasn't just limited to where it was made, it captured the interest of audiences around the globe. The impact of this memorable movie lives on, showing how imaginative and creative its creators were. The Killer Shrews features Gordon McClendon as Dr. Baines, who also serves as the uncredited narrator at the beginning. McClendon, known for his roles in John Ford Westerns, initially showcased his musical talents before transitioning to straight acting. In Rio Grande, he portrayed a guitar playing lead singing tenor with regimental singers, while in The Quiet Man, he played an accordion and sang tenor in the bar. Interestingly, after his daughter Jajami was born, she gained some weight due to overeating, earning her the nickname The Tank. These unique facets add depth to the background of The Killer Shrews, contributing to its narrative texture. The Killer Shrews is a movie released in 1959. During the initial season, he commuted from his house in Kinnears, Georgia to shoot The Dukes of Hazard. By the entire second season, he'd have to fly to and from the set every week. The Sons of the Pioneers, of which he was once a member, were awarded a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame for recording in Hollywood, California. At one point in the movie, Thorne suggests opening the windows in the house because of the approaching hurricane. It was a popular belief at one time that opening windows during a hurricane or tornado would equalize the extreme air pressure and save houses from being destroyed. This has since been found to be a myth. The Killer Shrews, along with its companion piece, The Giant Gila Monster, marked the directorial debut of Ray Kellogg, a veteran special effects man. He honed his comedy skills, later used on The Dukes of Hazard through Jerry Lewis. The film was featured on Mystery Science Theater 3000 in Season 5, Episode 7, and was riffed by Joel and the Bots. It garnered a cult following due to its absurd premise and low-budget charm. Despite its flaws, many viewers found entertainment in its sheer campiness and unintentional humor. Over the years, it has become a beloved cult classic among B-movie aficionados. Its legacy endures as a prime example of the so-bad-it's-good genre. 
The Killer Shrews, a film from 1959, now in the public domain, is available on DVD. It was spoofed in The Killer Shrews. James Best, known for his role as Festus Hagen on Gunsmoke, established the James Best Theater Center in Toluca Lake, California. The theater is located on Riverside Drive, upstairs in the rear portion of the Honey Baked Ham Building. Best, like Clint Eastwood on Rawhide, and others such as Steve McQueen, Sidney Poitier, and David Caruso, was right-handed but left-eye dominant, seen when handling rifles. He squinted with his right eye while sighting with his left. Best's approach to handling firearms was distinctive, shared by several other actors of his time. The Killer Shrews was filmed at Celo Ranch, a 100-acre estate near Lake Louisville in Texas, which was owned by star producer Gordon McClendon. McClendon, who played Dr. Baines in the movie, was also the uncredited executive producer and financier. He owned radio stations and theaters in Texas. McClendon's family sold the ranch in the late 1990s, and it became a housing development. In the movie, McClendon's character, Dr. Baines, encounters killer shrews on the island. McClendon met comedian singer Andy Griffith on an episode of The Andy Griffith Show, where Griffith's character was a guitar player. They remained friends for 52 years until Griffith's death in 2012. The film was shot in a rural Texas setting, adding to its authenticity. The collaboration between McClendon and Griffith, along with the eerie setting and suspenseful storyline, contributed to the movie's lasting appeal. Despite its low budget and simple effects, The Killer Shrews remains a cult classic among fans of vintage horror films. Gordon McClendon's involvement as both actor and producer further adds to the film's historical significance. The Killer Shrews, a 1959 movie, was released in a colorized version alongside another film, The Giant Gila Monster, by Legend Films. In Germany, it was titled Die Nacht der Unheimlichen Bestien, which translates to The Night of the Scary Beasts. This movie, along with a giant Gila monster, was produced by an independent company in Texas and intended for distribution as a double feature. The Killer Shrews showcases a group of characters trapped on an island with giant, deadly shrews, presenting a suspenseful and thrilling scenario. Its unique premise and tension-filled plot make it a notable addition to the realm of classic monster movies. In 1959, a movie called The Killer Shrews came out, featuring actors James Best and his former co-star John Schneider from The Dukes of Hazard. Schneider joined Best in two projects, CMT Cribs in 2010 and Return of the Killer Shrews in 2012, where Best reprised his role from decades earlier. In The Dukes in Hollywood, characters Roscoe and Boss Hogg, played by Best and Sorrel Book, talked about potential actors for a movie about Hazard County. Roscoe chose Burt Reynolds, who had been Best's acting student and longtime friend. Reynolds later portrayed Boss Hogg in The Dukes of Hazard. Producer and star Gordon McClendon, who played Dr. Baines, invested $125,000 in the movie. In a 1984 Los Angeles Times article, he mentioned quintupling his investment in profits.